Hello, my name is Adriano. I'm from Portugal, and uh, the, 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 the motive I'm here is like last, uh, last year, from October to December. I did, uh, I walk from the northern point of Portugal to the southern point. Uh, my relation to the Huntington's disease family is um, like five or six years ago, we found out that my father had it. And um, so I, I didn't uh, make the test. I don't know if I will make it or not. Uh, at least for now, I'm single. I don't plan to have a kid and in the future. It's kind of one of the motives. And I try to live my life as, as if... Um, in the same way, if I didn't, we know how this is a little bit uh, personal to say if you want to make a test or not. So, um, so it was a, a little bit of trouble the last couple of years, like the last two or three years, uh, because my, my mom and my, my dad, uh, they got divorced and then my father went alone and uh, he chose to hand up his life. He, he killed himself and um, I was actually in, in Asia doing a volunteering and I had to come back. So after this, after one year, uh, I went to, um, to Italy. And I think now it's a good moment to start the presentation. Uh, okay. So this happened two years ago in 2018, uh, in 19. And then, okay. And then, uh, it was like uh, really hard to cope with the situation, like the first year or so. And then uh, I, I got a job offer in Italy and then uh, it's where it started. So this is my presentation and uh, from Portugal on foot from north to south. So I think that sometimes it's important to talk about the before the beginning because a journey starts um, and in one day, the actual journey, the physical journey of walking this country. But before it was this not preparation uh, as per se the where I'm going to be in one day, in two weeks or in one month, but the mental preparation like uh, how can I do it? What should I plan? What the, um, can I do it or not? And uh, how this idea started is a really interesting thing. So that's one of the motives is what I told you because we found out recently like five or six years ago about the disease and then end up on, on this path. And it kind of put me uh, to judge uh, my relationship with my father over the years, not knowing about the disease. And this is a thing that I'm still trying to, to learn. And this was kind of a, a metaphor to go uh, deep down on the question and to have some time to think. Before the journey, I was working in Italy and I arrived in, for, uh, in February. And so two weeks later, I Corona hit Italy. Before I had to work in a studio, I, I could walk around and watch some, some flea markets, but then the COVID happened. And you remember everybody, the Lombardia zone in March was like the craziest place in the world. So it was the biggest lockdown ever. And I went, I was the first time in my life living alone and um, locked in an in a, in a apartment. So then because of this, I was starting to think like, uh, Life is short, we don't know, our freedom was taken and uh, I want to do something, but um, we can travel anywhere because of COVID, the borders are closed and in September I will be back in my country. So I start to think uh, what, what a journey I want to make. And because I, 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 I thought like I can do my journey and correlated with this situation, it can be a good bonding because I will do it anyways. So it's good to bring awareness to the cause. Uh, at the moment, in, in the summer in Portugal, because the borders were closed, everybody was traveling to the country, doing, and the, you can see some pictures. We have a really nice country with um, uh, full of the Atlantic Ocean on the coast. And before that, I, I had did uh, two times the Camino de Santiago, a short version, like for one week, uh, just walking. And every time I did that in my life, it, it bring me like the time to to slow down, to enjoy the little things, to see that uh, the worst case scenario, I can live with a backpack, <laughs> kind of. And uh, in Italy, I also explored some mountains. So this was uh, what led me to have this idea. But then uh, doubts and fears came uh, and they refused to the call. So I wanted to do that, but then I was thinking, 
Can I do it? Do I want to share online the things? Do I want to contact with the association? You know, all those fears before before we do something new, it comes um, to the top. Uh, where I'm going to, how I'm going to navigate, where do I going to sleep? Like, um, I don't know how much time it will take me. And so until the last day, I was full of doubts. And because of this, I didn't contact the, the Portuguese association just the, right the day before, because I was not sure that I was going to make it. So the first step in the first week, the day before, I contacted the Portuguese association. And um, we decided that uh, I will start the journey of um, promoting the Huntington's disease in Porto. That is the second biggest city in Portugal. And so that was really nice because it gave me this first week to walk, to see how I'm going, to, to see how I feel. And then the true journey uh, with the Huntington's disease started in Porto. So the first week I started here at the northest point of Portugal and I walked uh, down south uh, most of the times by the coast. Uh, I was walking an average of 20 kilometers per day. And um, the first two, my family uh, left me to the place by car. And then I slept there. The first night I slept to get um, used to, <laughs> to the feeling of sleeping in nature. So the first day was really hard because first thing in the morning, I watched this map. And this was all the path that I had to carry. And I would walk like 20 kilometers per day, like step by step. I slept in the nature, I saw wild horses in the, our beautiful mountains and that gave me a feeling of like, okay, this is being good, it's being nice. And um, so I carry everything that I need to survive for two months in my backpack, from sleeping bag, cooking gear, water, everything. And um, it was, I always enjoyed nature as I told you before, and it was getting really nice. And another thing that um, it was really interesting was uh, the sharing on so social media. So I was sharing and the, sometimes on these days we have the, um, the conception of uh, social media is bad and we promote things and it can make you feel that you are not worth and comparing yourself to others. But on the other hand, uh, in this case, it helped me because I was posting my journey and my adventure and people were like, oh, nice thing that you are doing. Uh, I'm loving following you, your journey. It makes me feel, uh, making me live with you. So uh, on this first town, by chance, on a supermarket, because I'm from the north, there was a friend of mine, uh, a colleague of mine from university that worked there. And he said, oh, I saw your, your trip. Do you have any place to sleep? And I said, no, I have my tent. And they said, okay, you can stay in my place. So on the northern region was really interesting to see how family and friends that were following my adventure, the, I never asked for a house, people offered me the house. It was really amazing that. So after this uh, first or second day, I started to do these pictures jumping and it became like my, uh, my standard picture of the day. Every day I would po post a picture and write something about it or, or put a quote or, or write something for myself about what I was doing at the moment. This is another picture jumping, then cold nights at the top of the mountain. Sometimes the road is not that easy and you have water, but it felt good to have <laughs> the water on your feet. Some wine, some, uh, some rain and some sun. Then in Porto. Porto was the chapter of friendships and partnerships. So in Porto was my first time that I stopped after two weeks. Every day I walked those two weeks. And in Porto, I stopped for two days. And then was the time uh, to match the Huntington's um, Association of Portugal to, to my walk. Uh, it, and again, the friendship part of this was really interesting because I sent to a friend of mine these pictures and he helped me to do the graphic design. So once we step out of comfort zone and do, do something like in some kind of way greater than you, it, people tend to help you because they, they enjoy being part of the process. Um, in Porto, it was time to fix some things on my tent, to have some nice francesinha, that is a, a Portuguese dish, and to see the views. It was the, um, really good to rest for these two days. Because I'm from north after Porto, it's kind of a, a new world. Uh, a, and... Um, the motto for this thing is uh, before it was like when we are a child, like our family, our parents take care of us, my friends, they took care of me. After this, it was like my 
teenage years. So <laughs> I start to meet strangers and the stranger is a friend that you didn't meet. Um, so you start to give um, walking 20 kilometers a day. And uh, the, the good thing is like every day you walk, uh, you are further from the beginning and closer to the end. So when people ask me what was the hardest part, it was walking. If you ever, if I ever thought in in giving up, and I said no, because every time I'm closer to my objective and uh, further away from where I started. So it was never um, a thing to think about. Um, oh, this was the first stranger that I met. He was in a camper van park. And um, I just set the tent there and I said, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, say to these persons that I'm here, if they wake up in the middle of the night and see a tent, they are not scared. So they invite me, they give me things to eat and for breakfast and everything. It, it was a, a really nice first moment with strangers. And uh, remember that this was in pandemic time. It, it was like in October, November. So everybody is really, afraid of, of um, communicating with each other but in this case if you if you go your own path people will help you anyways uh, this is was another time there was a rainstorm and um, this uh, gentleman from association let me sleep in, inside uh, this is another of the pictures jumping and so as the journey goes through I don't have more pain in my legs. It's it's just enjoyable to have uh, all these different encounters. And it's really good to talk about this even today because uh, I remember these things and I said, you can look back and feel like uh, I'm living this again as I'm sharing with you. Uh, this was uh, a really interesting moment that I, I climbed on top of the hill. I I deviate my route just to go on top of this uh, mountain and it was really worth it. And then going back down, I found this uh, typical fisherman village lady and we started talking and I was sharing my story and people said, after two or three weeks walking, people start to say, oh, no, no way, you come from this far. Uh, do, do you want some fruit and some food? And this lady gave me. And then on the other hand of the street from the balcony, I see a broom with a, with a bag with fruits and it was the neighbor that was listening to the conversation and the, the, the neighbor was blind. So she's always on the balcony listening to the things and she also helped me and gave me some food. It was super nice to see how people can help you. And then in Nazare, two weeks later, I found the same couple that was on the, on the van on the first night that I, I slept. And it was really funny. It was a really nice moment to see those people again. And uh, to see that sometimes even in the most odd situations, you can find people again. It was really interesting in this place. So this uh, was the, a photo of one day that was the only day that I didn't walk alone. Uh, on this day, I found these this guys. Uh, one is from Canada, another is from Germany. And, um, and they really inspired me and they gave me some tricks to do those things, to more technical things about walking long distance. Um, this German guy was walking for six months. He came all the way from Germany, he passed France, he passed Northern Spain, and I found him in Portugal. So he was like my mentors. At this point, they were my mentors. They taught me small tricks, how to, to get along with the longer distance, how to carry the less weight. And uh, the further I go, the further I go down south of the country. And this is like a metaphor for going to deep down the question to go, to go along the coast and see this beautiful country that is the country of mine. Um, and I travel around Europe and Asia uh, and uh, to be back and to enjoy the place that I was born, it was a really amazing sensation. Uh, this was uh, another weekend that I stay at the these guys' houses, and it was amazing. They took me to to collect mussels on the the near on the beach. They took me to horse ride, and they welcomed me as my family. It, it, it is really amazing. Another thing is to do this kind of journey alone. Uh, some people are, are afraid to to travel alone, and uh, at least from my experience, uh, you you get out of your home alone but then on the journey you can make friendships really easily and bonding 
And because you are alone, you have no ties to nothing. You can stay uh, and talk with whoever you want. If you have a friend, you are saying like, maybe he's tired, maybe not. In this place, everything is for you. Everything that happens to you is just for you. There is the upsides and the downsides of this. Uh, another the jumping photo. <laughs> we will see a lot of this one. And then um, finally, I write to Lisbon. This is like one month and one week after I started my journey. Um, Lisbon is like a cue point on the, the journey because I met um, with the European Huntington Association to record um, a video. And it was really interesting uh, to have this feedback on Facebook and everything. And uh, to see that everything is connected and uh, this, this condition, this disease can bring people together like we are here today. And we found another stories. And um, it reminds me when I went the first time, I went to a conference in Romania with the Huntington Disease Association of Europe. And it was really good to feel like just um, the fact that these people share stories similar to us. We are like a family. We don't need to know each other. And it's amazing. It was like an, an amazing moment. Yeah. And to realize that I can share things with you guys without having the pressure to feel like victimized or something, it's just our life. And that's how things go. So this was a focal moment too, to engage with the European community. And uh, so we keep moving forward. Uh, at this point, um, it was really good because at somewhere and somehow through friends and friends of friends, I got the chance to go to Admira, that is a town in Portugal, and to record something for the television. So on this day, I stopped there and um, I was appointed to have an interview on uh, those morning talk shows on the national television. And uh, so from this moment, I knew that uh, I have to be in Lisbon. I have to go to the southernmost point of Portugal in Faro and I have to go back to Lisbon on this date. Not the jumping photo. <laughs> and then... Uh, because of this, because now, before, the, before this interview, I, I didn't have uh, time schedules or nothing. I could go at whatever pace I want. And uh, with this, I know I have to go down uh, further and faster. And uh, with this, also after one month and a half, uh, walking every day, uh, mounting your tent, dismounting your tent, uh, cooking, uh, taking pictures, uh, those pictures jumping sometimes took half an hour to take. And then I had to find some place with internet. I have to post everything. I have to write everything. So my, I think my days were busier than ever. So I was getting a little tired of this sharing thing. And um, so I want to go faster. And uh, I start to walk like 30 kilometers a day. Uh, I also have the notebook that I wrote every day of the journey. It was like 62 days walking. Um, and I had some days behind, so it was a lot of things to accomplish. But now, uh, luckily, I made it and I can share all these things for you. Uh, along this faster paced journey, uh, I also found some, some places to stay, like locals. They heard my story, they found out about um, the disease and what happened with me and my father, what I'm doing, walking for one and a half month. Everybody helped me. I slept in both places, like some caravans i slept in trucks in the middle of nowhere that people helped me and um, on this morning for example i was locked inside the, the, the truck and i couldn't get out so i had to wait like four hours inside the truck uh, some rivers that crossed my journey and then in this is um a cork tree that portugal is uh, really good at production and because the cork tree is only harvested uh, from 10 to 10 years, they write numbers on the... Um, I, I learned this on this journey. They write a number. So if this is a nine, only in 2029 it will be cut. So in nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero, we go to Faro. So in Faro is the southernmost point of Portugal. And it's like, it's the final countdown. And so, because of this, um, I know that I have to be in Lisbon someday. And I arrived at Faro. But the, the thing is, the most southern point of 
continental Portugal, as per se, is in a smile highland. It's called the desert highland. And um, okay, <laughs> first of all, I found the, these two guys again in Faro. So as the same thing with the caravan couple, I found these guys in Faro again, and they let me sleep uh, in their apartment. And then they move on a journey and me and mine. But there was a problem. It was like um, 35 euros uh, to, to cross uh, um, from Faro to the desert highland. And uh, 35 euros if they found like uh, five or six people to fill the boat. And the other one was like 40 euros and 35. And uh, at this point, after almost two months walking, I was not sure if I wanted, I, I, I didn't want to because I was saving and uh, dollar averaging cost everything and saving a lot and cooking and camping uh, to, to, to be like, to be in this kind of primitive survival mode. So I was not, um, it was not in my mind to pay 35 euros to, to do this journey. I was trying to hitchhike boats here, <laughs> almost got lucky. And then I was kind of sad because like, if, is this the last run for, for, the, um, for the desert island? But then it was like the last day after two days in town trying to, to talk with fishermen, to talk with the tourist guides, but it was December, no tourists around. And I said, okay, tomorrow is everything or nothing. So, and uh, as you can say, it's like, it's a part where I make peace with, with myself. What I was thinking those days was, okay, Adriano, you walk 1,000 kilometers in two months. Um, okay, if you, you don't want to pay for going there, because actually it felt like if I have to pay, it's kind of a loss. So I said, okay, Adriano, if I can go today for free and somehow, I will not go. I decided this the morning uh, as the moment I woke up. So it was this close to, to the end of the, um, the journey, the actual uh, continental hand. And I said, okay, if you don't go, that's okay. You've done your job. You, it's all about the process, not uh, the outcome and the end result. So I was with peace with myself and I said, okay, if I can get it, I will go back to Lisbon because I have this interview uh, two days after. So I hop on the boat to get to, there is a boat to go to the closest island and I can see the desert island from across. And I was on the beach walking around and thinking to myself, how can I do this? And then suddenly a fisherman tells me something that is crazy, sorry. Um, so there is this lighthouse and then by one in a million chance, the light bulb was broken. And then the guys went to change the light bulb on that day. So I, I made it. I could get on the boat and I can go to this desert island. But the guy says, okay, we have 30 minutes to change the light bulb. So they left me in one spot on the highland. But then the southernmost point, there is a sculpture there. And I could see it far away. And they said, okay, you have 20 minutes. And I'm like, oh man. So I stopped running <laughs> with my backpack. <laughs> that I walked to, with the whole country with that backpack. And then instead of putting the backpack down, no, I just run with it. I, I was just in ecstasy. So I run and I was filming everything. And then at the end, I really made it. So I made it to the sculpture. And it was like a really nice relief moment for brief moments. Then I hop on the boat, then I go there and uh, this is the final picture of the sculpture, and this is the southernmost point of Portugal. The first one that I was with my head upside down was the, the northern point. It was a journey of 62 days and um, with a lot of sharing, lots of uh, faith in humanity restored, that strangers can help you and uh, you can survive with so much little than we think. And sometimes we have to, um, to make our problems relative and think in long term or something. It's, it, it helped me to travel alone, to have this sense of humanity that uh, even if I buy my, by myself, uh, surrounded by strangers, I can accomplish anything. And so at the end of the adventure, another one begins. And uh, because I thought it was not enough to walk two months in my old country, I said, okay, you know what's even harder? It's maybe to try to hitchhike until Lisbon. 
in pandemic times. And people said, oh, you are crazy. Nobody will give you a ride. Uh, it's impossible. You can do it. Uh, it. It's even crazier than walking. But then I got it. And um, the first day I got, so right after this immense adventure, I said, I will embark on another one. Uh, the first day I got to two hitchhikes and uh, I, I stayed really close to the town of Faro and I slept on the gas station. <laughs> I wanted my tent, but on the next day, this was the, the way that I found to, to get hitchhiked faster. If you do a stand up, you can, people stop for sure. And then on this day, I managed to have to make like uh, 300 kilometers by hitchhiking with seven seven car rides and I made it to Lisbon. And so after I made it to Lisbon, this is the moment to share my story to this part. And uh, it, it felt really good to have my effort recognized and to, to be able to talk about this on television. So we went on national television and um, here he says, walking for a solidarity cause. And uh, this is one really known problem. And after this show, I received some texts of people uh, that I did, they didn't know about the, the Portuguese association, people with uh, hunting tendencies on their family, and they were kind of isolated. And then they, they, it was like a bridge for them to connect with people and they shared their stories. It was really amazing. Uh, after all this journey, if we can touch one or two people, it's enough. Uh, the warmth that I felt by reading those messages from public stations. And they told me their stories and said, oh, what a life that you have been through. And they said, oh, uh, it's really amazing your story. And I'm saying to them, like, it's, your is even amazing. I just walked and you struggle with all these difficulties. And it was really good. Um, so the end of the story, it's you just need to take the first step. After that, you are further from the beginning and uh, near to the end of your journey. And that's the end.